Newsmaker Sunday with Fox 10's John Hook. Thanks for joining us for Fox 10 Newsmaker Sunday. This morning, pleased to be joined by Arizona Governor Doug Ducey and Cardinals President Michael Bidwell. I sat with the two in the governor's office on Friday to talk to them about a new program called Arizona Zenheros. It's a group to try to rebuild Arizona's image, which you know has been tarnished in recent years for a number of reasons. And they want to attract business here and burnish the state's image. I talked to them about that, and I also talked to them about an image reset for Arizona. There is like a bromance happening here. What is it with you guys um, in, in the private sector that drew you together, not only for the campaign, because Michael, you supported him, in the campaign, right. but you guys seem to see eye to eye on your worldview about getting things done and quickly. Well, I, I think the, the common thread would be leadership. Uh, I did go to Michael during the campaign. He was undecided. I knew him from the business community. I knew him from being a season ticket holder, but he, he, he was very candid that, that he was undecided. And uh, I, I made the case of what I thought Arizona could be. And, and where we were right now, we both come from different places and have built our businesses here. Uh, but I'll let him speak f for himself because I think a lot of what we're doing now, I, I said that it, the governor can't do it alone. We need leadership from the business Are community. you leaning on him for to make things happen? Well, I'm saying when you have government saying, let's go this way, there's nothing more powerful than an outspoken leader in the business community that can help bring others along. And you're both Midwesterners, so there's some commonality there, right? I think so. I think uh, we were similar ages. Uh, we knew each other uh, before he began running for governor. And as, as the governor says, you know, I was undecided. Uh, I knew other people in the race. I think a lot of business leaders did. And, and uh, as I got to know Doug's agenda and, and got to know him better, I felt more and more comfortable and finally made the decision I was going to get on board. And, and what I can tell you is I really like the direction he's taken the state. And even behind closed doors, he is about positive change for Arizona giving opportunity for everybody and what I've found in in you know everything that I've been about around this community is in order to get big things done and achieve positive goals you need both strong public sector leadership which we have and strong private sector leadership and uh, one thing I'm trying to do is is help uh, improve this community yesterday's I don't know what you would call it uh, it was we, a, we called it the governor's leadership. Segment. Okay, it it seemed to me like you were hitting the reset button about Arizona's image. Am I overstating that? Well, I think because we have so many people that have moved here from other places, and you know, there's no better leading indicator about the attractiveness or economic opportunity of a place than the fact that folks in the most mobile country in the world pack up U-Haul trucks and move here to call this place home. So we said, how, what's our reputation? How do we want to be perceived? How do we want to be uh, perceived to the other 49 states, to our largest trading partners, and around the world? So there's a lot of power in that to promote the citizens and the state of Arizona to improve the quality of life. And what I wanted to do was take a leadership role in that. I proposed that to Michael during the campaign, and we, we brainstormed about it, but you can't really do any of that until you get over the finish line. And what you saw yesterday was really the idea of how do we bring this to life? How do we bring the business community and, and leadership and public policy together around issues that unite people and also address major, major issues in our state? You, you've seen this for a long period since you guys moved out here in, in 88. Do you think that because of the rapid growth, we went through some growing pains about becoming a big city and that we, we had several missteps. We lost a Super Bowl over MLK. You've seen these kind of crises uh, manifest in, in sport. Do you think that we're starting to get beyond this? Well, I think it started already, John. I think when you look at um, you know some of the concerns we had for the last six, seven, eight years, I viewed this election or last fall's election as an opportunity for us to really step forward, especially with the Pro Bowl, the the Phoenix Open, and the Super Bowl. That Super Bowl was an opportunity for Arizona to reset its image, and that's what I started working on with uh, with the governor before the Super Bowl even uh, got here. And you talked about <coughs> it in the campaign. Was this was going to be an opportunity for us to bring in CEOs. We brought in about 70 CEOs. 
our governor met with every single one of those CEOs over that weekend. Um, you know, people that were interested in moving their companies here to Arizona. And for me, I've been working on economic development for a long time in this state. And, and to have a governor that engaged who is helping us grow the economy, bring new jobs here, create opportunities for people. This was one of the uh, benefits from hosting a Super Bowl is to reset, reset our Im image and also do a lot of economic development. Apple kind of happened as a result of that, right? Yes, it did. Any it, others? Well, Apple happened as a result of that. You've seen a Theranos, uh, what we did with Uber and Lyft in terms of lifting regulations and the fact that their presence is increasing in the state, uh, what we did in the microbrewery situation in terms of bringing the industry together rather than having legislators figure out what's right and what's wrong, letting a company like Four Peaks thrive. How did you, during the legislative session, which was lightning fast, I know you guys were looking at the landscape of bills and you were trying to talk to leadership about what had a chance of passage and what didn't and what you wouldn't sign and what you would. How do you prevent what Governor Symington used to call loons in the lake, stuff that would pop up over there that's just a nightmare for our image? How did you put the kibosh on that stuff? Well, I would say it's, it's all about relationships. I mean, I think really anything in life in terms of direction is, is about that one-on-one -on -one, uh, trust that you, you build over the course of time. So upon election and even during the, the campaign, uh, I not only reached out to business leaders and influencers, but I reached out to legislative leadership. I have an objective of sitting down with everyone in our legislature, both Republican and Democrat, to talk about, they know what's important to me. I mean, I, get, I talked about it for a full year, and I get settings like this in which to emphasize the direction I, I want to go, but I want to know what's important to them. And when we can find things that we can unite on like the economy, like education, like driving Arizona forward, then we're going to find ways to work together. So I don't really think the legislative session was lightning fast. I know it was quick in comparison to other years, but I would really say it's a, it's a testament to a, a governor working with legislative leadership. Tell me about Haneros, Zeneros. Zenheros. Zenheros. Yes. Zenheros, these are the water masters that controlled the canal systems of yesteryear that really brought life to the desert, the flourishing uh, environment we now enjoy in Arizona. And this came out of the conversations that Michael and I had is, is there one organization that can work to advocate on behalf of the state? And as far as I remember, you presented the name Zenheros. Yep. yep. Your idea. Uh, it was, yeah. But the idea of, of creating a statewide promotional organization uh, was the governor's. He wanted, there's no organization until today that's. That's been, not GPEC? Uh, GPEC does a regional uh, Phoenix era. And so there's never been one that's been promoting the whole state. And for, for what I thought was key was to get accurate information out about Arizona, the real facts. So often we're repeating headlines we may have uh, heard or, you know, speaking points that somebody may have used when criticizing the state and they're not accurate. So what we want to do is make this ArizonaZanharos.com a place where people can sign up, become a, uh, a, a Zanharo. It's, it's open, open to everybody. Like an ambassador? It, like an ambassador because we all have our own circles of people that we, we speak to both in and out of the state where we can educate people about the real facts. So you sign up, you immediately get an email uh, with uh, some information that is really positive about Arizona that's accurate that you know maybe you didn't know before and now you can start uh, being armed with the right <laughs> kind of facts. Go ahead, Governor. Well, you, you brought up a great point because when you talk about GPAC, Greater Phoenix Economic Leadership, or GPL, Greater Phoenix Leadership, Southern Arizona Leadership, TRIO, Flagstaff 40, there are groups like this, chambers, uh, organizations, sea level groups all over the state, but there's no one group that speaks for the whole state and advocates on behalf of it. And what I noticed getting outside of Maricopa County, you know, 14 other counties in the state, they often feel neglected. So there are a lot of people from out counties yesterday when we had the governor's leadership summit, and this is a way to give them the opportunity to be involved and to speak in an umbrella type organization. And there's all the details on this at ArizonaZanharos.com as to how do we do that. So none of these groups are going away. This doesn't replace any of these groups. It's just an accent on what the state is, is doing. Try to coordinate? Yes.
Welcome back to Fox 10 Newsmaker Sunday. In the second segment of my conversation with Cardinals President Michael Bidwell and Governor Doug Ducey, we talk about this relationship between the two, which I liken to almost a president, vice president. They are very closely joined and think a lot alike. We talked about that as well as the issue of whether Arizona can truly be a great state without fixing its education problems. Is Michael almost a de facto uh, member of your cabinet? Well, I would say, you know, there have been other people in the, in the history of Arizona that have really stepped up from the business community and, and been leaders. You know, you hear the stories about Carl Eller or Stan Turley or uh, most recently Jerry Colangelo, who continues to, to be a leader. And, and Michael has stepped forward and said, you know, a lot of folks, when it comes to politics, they're like, oh, I, I won't get involved in that. Or, or people get upset with each other. And, and Michael, through the process, has said, and we've talked about policy. We've talked about ideas. And he said, I, I want to help with this. So in, in that sense, in terms of building and bringing the business community together, this is the person that has stepped up and said, let's work together. And uh, so far, so good. We're 150 days in. But I'm, I'm thinking this is just the beginning of what can be achieved. And you're, and you're OK. I mean, this is, a, this is a time burn for you trying to run a football team and, and do this. Right, and, and all the extra spare time I have. But it's <laughs> important. And it's, <laughs> It's important for um, leaders to step forward and help their community. And, uh, you know, the community uh, supports us in a great way, and so I want to give back, and this is one of the ways I can. You mentioned him, and I, I think that's a very interesting comparison. You mentioned Jerry Colangelo. Do you see yourself in some regard filling that role? Well, those are big shoes to fill, uh, as well as the others that uh, the governor uh, mentioned. You know, I'm just doing uh, the best I can to try to help out in our current time. and. Uh, to be compared to people like uh, Jerry and, and others, um, you know, those, those are awfully high compliments. But, uh, you know, I want to just keep working hard to try to improve this state. And I, I think so many of us um, want to see an improved state, and I'm in a position where I can help. Let me ask you about education for a minute, because this we talked about, it, obviously, in the campaign. Yes. We did a whole debate on it. Yes. Um, can we be a great state until we get this education system figured out? Oh, well, we can, one, we can figure out this education system. Two, I would say, you know, I, I, I do this in almost every room I'm in, John. I'll say, who was born somewhere other than the state of Arizona? And the fact that so many hands go up say that we've got a preferable place to live, you know, a, attractiveness uh, for our quality of life. And we've got these pockets of excellence in education, three of the top ten public high schools in the country. So how do we do that more often? And this was something we brought in Joel Klein, who who was a, a, a Democrat uh, attorney general in the Clinton administration, and Paul Pasterek, who worked in the in the Bush administration, uh, the respective superintendents in their former in lives New York of New Louis York and Louisiana, yeah. who talked about how that you how you do this, how you do it in more places, more how areas. How do you do it, Governor? Well, you do it by getting these funding formulas right. First, you, you commit. We're wasting money. Well, we can spend our money more effectively. We certainly can. We know where education happens it happens inside a school inside a classroom and it's about the teacher inside that classroom and the kids that are there but the one that's going to have the most knowledge of that classroom and the ability inside a school is a principal the leader of that school so we want to have those dollars flow in that direction so we can spend them more effectively and the turnaround that they had in New Orleans after Katrina was dramatic and the issues that they faced in New York, uh, I think a lot of times people think we have unsolvable problems. English language learners and free and reduced lunch and tribal nations. Well, they have those same types of issues in, in places like uh, New York and New Orleans. They might just call them by, by different names in terms of the inner city or whatever's happening in terms of parents in the home. But it's addressing that that child can learn and a teacher in that classroom can make a difference, and those dollars should flow towards performance and results. And we're gonna apply that in this next legislative session, and it's been people like Michael that that makes sense to, because he knows the power of a chief executive officer. But I also wanna say we've reached out you know, to the entire business community, um, and there are a lot of people that are stepping up and saying, I wanna be uh, helpful as well. So I I'm thankful that one somebody wants to step up and there'll be a face of, of the business community and, and lead the Zen Heralds like Michael Bidwell and Leah Marquez Peterson, but know that we've got hundreds of people that are saying we want to be a part of this. 
On education, I just want to tell you a personal story. Um, my kids just took the AZ merit test a few yes. weeks ago. Now we're in Scottsdale. We have every advantage you could possibly have. Mm -hmm. And they're appealing to the, the parents. Get these kids in there with a bunch of number two pencils, bring in extra number two pencils. This is Scottsdale. Yes. It makes me worry what's happening in our inner city schools if in a school like Scott in a school in Scottsdale, the parents are, are filling in, backfilling in critical learning tools as simple as a pencil to take that that test. It is concerning. And if you think about it, in the state of Arizona, we are spending over ten billion dollars. These are local dollars, state dollars, and federal dollars to educate over one million school children. It's about nine thousand four hundred dollars per pupil. So when you talk about an effective use of spending, don't you think somewhere in nine thousand four hundred dollars per student you'd find the money for a, for a number two pencil? I would think so, but it's, it, it's, it's, it's astonishing. It's in the bureaucracy, the administration, and the overhead. 250 school districts in the state, that's multiple food service, transportation, custodial, construction, plant maintenance organizations. There are a lot of dollars that we can properly organize so that we can begin funding at the classroom and build up, and that's what our legislative agenda is going to be about. That's what this, you know, uh, I want to set the record straight on education. We are spending more money in K-12 education in total dollars than ever in the history of Arizona, and this is in a time of scarcity. So we're protecting K-12 education. We had to make some tough decisions in this budget. There's just no getting around it because we had a $1 billion deficit, but we protected K-12. What we want to look to in the next legislative session is how do we effectively spend those dollars to get better results. And you know, everybody was mad at you after this budget about mm -hmm. education. You had Dr. Crow and you had the, the, the Board of Regents. They were furious about the cuts to higher ed. K through 12 got hit. Uh, county, the, the community colleges, they got hit. Everybody felt the pain. Uh, charters felt the pain. We had a billion dollars that was being spent that we didn't have. So, you know, John, everyone says they want government to run like a business until it does. Now we finally have it level set. We are living within our means. We've protected the taxpayers, protected public safety, to protect the Department of Child Safety. I've met with Dr. Crow right in this office. We're talking about what's going to happen next so that we have the best universities possible. And, I'm, and he's a fantastic leader. Uh, met with Ann Weaver Hart down at the U of A and Rita Chang at NAU. So uh, I studied finance. So I did have to remind people that the first focus was going to be fiscal responsibility around this budget. We've done that. Now we can do all the other things to improve what we expect from our government and those services. Since you were treasurer, you know the landscape. Is it improving? Are the, are the sales tax revenues starting to swing upward? I know it hasn't done it as quickly as we thought it would. But is it starting to? It's starting to. We're seeing a, a slight uptick. So I'm always someone, you know, back in my past life at Cold Stone Creamery, and I imagine uh, other business leaders do this as well. We'd have an expected budget, an optimistic budget, and a pessimistic budget. Mm -hmm. You know, what if something right. happens, the economy falls off the rails? So we're seeing a slight uptick. We may have a p pleasant surprise in terms of revenues, and that will be great news. And if, God forbid, the economy would fall off the rails, we'll be even happier that we have this responsible budget because it'll put Arizona in a, in a better position in which to dig out. But right now, uh, you can kind of see the sun coming over the horizon, and it looks like we might be in for some growth. Do you feel that as well, Michael? Do you I, feel like we're starting to come out of this a little bit? I feel like we are. But it's been I'll, slow. It, it's been slow. I think there's some global things that, that are, are probably impacting Arizona, but more importantly, what I think we have is we this fiscal responsibility at the state is really important. I think it's really important for business and, and for everybody in Arizona, even though there might be some uh, some people that didn't feel completely comfortable with, with the budget. But as we go forward, we've got a plan. It's a plan that's fiscally responsible and it's one that's built on performance. What we've got to do and what I think the governor is focused on is taking the inefficiency out. Make sure we get, as citizens, the performance for every dollar that we're investing as taxpayers.
relationship with Diane Douglas right now, this has been really odd, and now you've got her board over here, a few floors down from here, uh, set up office. Uh, is this dysfunctional? What's happening here? I would say I've got a positive relationship with Diane Douglas. Uh, I've talked to her on Valentine's Day. We've made a commitment that we want to work together. No surprises. Uh, what you're seeing, which I think is really much ado about not a lot, is a, a vote of the their board on where to locate some of these employees. We had some open office space. They felt space intimidated, it sounded like. They the, felt like they were in a hostile workplace. Well, I, you'll have to talk to them about that. Uh, what we want to do is find a way that we come together so that we focus these dollars in, in the right places. And I'll work with any leader, Republican or Democrat, statewide. You can work statewide. with them, even though it's gotten oh, a little we, weird. We, we can work together, uh, and, but I want to stay focused on what our objectives are, and that's improvement inside the classroom. Um, you talked a lot, and we talked about it in the debate, Common Core. Where are you on Common Core right now? Well, I spoke out against Common Core because of how it ties us to Washington, D.C., and what I've said to the Board of Education is, let's replace Common Core. Let's bring in Arizona standards. Now, it's traditional that we're going to, to refresh standards every five years anyway. Common Core has become the focus. And in many ways, I think it's become too much of a distraction because what we're not talking about is what are our kids learning? What do they know? And what Which are is they really equipped? the essence of Common Core. It's just benchmarks. That's all it is. It's what are very they equipped basic. to do upon graduation? Right. So I think the fact that these will be Arizona written standards, and if there's a good standard, like a kid doesn't move on to fourth grade from third grade if they can't read, let's keep it. But if there's something that ties us to Washington, D.C. for funding or purchases obedience for a waiver that we need from No Child Left Behind, I really like what George Will said the best is that 50 years of increasing Washington involvement in American K-12 education has resulted in mediocrity. I don't think this is something we should blame the federal government for. I think it's something we need to take charge of in Arizona, and that's what we're going to do in this administration. Just quickly, um, I, you know, I watch Michael and I see the upswing in the Cardinals and, and what's happened with the franchise and the whole thing. The whole dynamic and image has changed. You came in here with, we had some image issues, and I think you're trying to deal with that. But beyond that, this first six months, what's been the biggest surprise? What's the learning curve been like? Be brutally honest with me about this. How hard has it been to slide in from the private sector, then the treasurer, into this job? Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're 150 days in. And I would say the biggest surprise for me, John, is how much we've been able to accomplish in a short amount of time. You know, people say government can't get things done. You know, I think with the right leadership, the right vision, uh, picking the right people and charting the course, you can get things done. So we were clear about that on the campaign trail. That's the same things we're doing. We, we said we want to be fiscally responsible. We want to focus on the economy. We want to focus on education. We want to focus on Arizona's reputation. That's what we're working on. So we've got it a lot done. Now there is uh, probably nothing that can prepare you for this job, but I will say being a private sector CEO it's many of those skills that I've tried to bring to this office. And then the job of treasurer, being at the corner of Maine and Maine on the state's finances and how federal f dollars affect the state was, was great preparation. And then um, every day is an adventure in the governor's office. And, and we're embracing And there's it. a surprise around every corner. And you're here for a short period of time. So we have a real sense of urgency. You know, we're through one legislative session. We've got three left. The beauty of right now is we have time to plan. From, from today, May 15th, until early January of what that, that bold legislative agenda is going to look like. I'm reaching out to the business community. Thankfully, the business community is reaching back. We're reaching out to education champions who want to see real results inside our schools. And I think all of us are proud to live here, and we want the rest of the country to see that. Biggest frustration? Biggest frustration is when you're a chief executive in the private sector, you do get to make the final decision. Here, you do have to work with the House and the Senate, and you have to make your case. And oftentimes, even the best of intentions can be misunderstood, but that is something we'll continually be working on, is how do we better communicate what we want to get done and, and then achieving it. That's Newsmaker Sunday. Thanks to the governor and Cardinals president, Michael Bidwell. We'll see you next week on Fox 10 Newsmaker Sunday.